So I'm currently on a journey learning about the new Arduino Uno Q, Q for Qualcomm, because it has a Qualcomm Dragon Wing SOC on it, which means it can run Linux, but of course it's also an Arduino, which means it has a microcontroller on it. Now, so far I've done an unboxing. In this video, I'm gonna take you through how you connect it up, how you boot it up, and how it works as a single board computer in that you can run Linux on it. It's gonna be a follow-up video where I talk more about the microcontroller part, the new App Lab application, and all that kind of stuff. So this is a journey, and we're now part way along it, and there's more to come. As I say, this video is all about Linux running on an Arduino. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so to connect it up, you're gonna need some kind of hub because this board only has a single USB-C port on it. But of course, that USB-C port is very versatile. So you wanna be able to connect up a mouse and a keyboard. So you're gonna need kind of your standard uh, USB connectors for that. But also you're gonna be able to need to connect up to a display. And in this case, the USB-C port can also carry a HDMI signal. So this little dongle that I've got here has both USB ports on it and a HDMI port on it. And so you connect them all together through the USB-C port on the Arduino. But you also need to add power. So this little dongle also has a place where you can add in USB-C power input using a standard charger, standard brick, and then that will power the board and outwards you get the mouse keyboard and the display. And this is a generic device, it's not actually from Arduino, I just bought it from my local online electronics store and I think basically anything that kind of does this should work, 10, 20 dollars, something like that, whatever it is, you can get bigger ones, you can get smaller ones, you can get them all kind of things connected to them. Now once you have that all connected it will boot up. Now the microcontroller part boots up instantly and it looks like the default firmware displays this nice little animation as the Linux part is booting up. So big difference between of course a a system like Linux and a microcontroller. The microcontroller is instant boot under a second kind of thing, uh, whereas the Linux system might take uh, you know, a minute or two to boot up. Okay, so the microcontroller comes on straight away. And as I said, in a follow-up video, I'm gonna be looking at how you work with that microcontroller. Okay, so here's the desktop. The first time you boot this, you're actually asked to type in a password, set a password. I've done that, and now I'm gonna type in that password and then we just wait a few moments and the desktop will appear. So the desktop's come up and as you can see, Arduino Q, but first of all, straight away, the Arduino App Lab comes up and starts the network setup process. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that quickly. Okay, so the App Lab has come up. I'm not gonna go into this now. I'm gonna deal with that in my full review, but let's get rid of that. Okay, so this is running the XFCE desktop. And so a quick tour, obviously we have a wallpaper here, down here at the bottom, we have a kind of a taskbar with some pinned different applications on it. And we'll go have a look at those in a minute. You've got desktop icons, home, the file system, and then of course that app lab program that we were just in. Top left here, you click for applications and you can go through all the different things, settings, accessories, internet, and so on. We'll go into that in a bit in a minute. And here over the right hand side, we've got a kind of a uh, shutdown menu. And then of course there's a clock there, Bluetooth settings, uh, Wi-Fi settings uh, and so on. Okay, so let's start down here at the bottom. We can click on the file manager and that just brings up the XFCE file manager and I can go into my documents folder. There's nothing in any of these. I've only just booted this up. Okay, downloads folder and so on. So just as you'd expect on a file manager. Okay, next that we have a web browser. Well, this will be interesting to see what kind of uh, speed we're gonna get on this web browser. Okay, so there you go, it's come up and it's using DuckDuckGo as its default search engine. Let's search for Gary Explains. Hopefully that will bring up my YouTube page, might bring up my GitHub repository. Let's see what happens. Okay, both of them, in fact, there you go, GitHub and YouTube. Let's go ahead and click on the YouTube. Now let's see if we can actually get some video playing. Okay, it took a few seconds to come up, but when it eventually did, let's just click, well, I might as well click on the Arduino Q unboxing video. Let's see what that will do. Can we just make this window full screen while we're waiting for that to come up? Okay, so there we have it. There is my video on the unboxing of this uh, very device. Okay, let's just get out of here and let's carry on our desktop tour. 
So of course we also have a terminal window here. Let's click on that and let's do some investigation about what's on this device. First of all, we'll try and make the font a bit bigger and we'll make the window bigger to go with it. Okay, so first of all, LS CPU. So what's it saying here? So it's saying it's 64 bit uh, uh, ARM, four CPU to Qualcomm Cryo V2. Now, of course, that Cryo V2 is actually a quad core Cortex A53 with a Adreno 702 GPU. OK, let's try HTOP. Yep. OK, so there we can see our two gigs of RAM, the four CPU cores. And we can see there we've got about half a gigabyte being used. And so we've got about another gigabyte and change free at the moment. OK, let's look at the disk space from the command line here. So that's the way the operating system is uh, mounted here. We can see there's a boot partition, there's a home partition. So the home partition, as we run it, gives us 2.3 gigs of our own uh, space for our own data in home slash Arduino. And yet the root partition itself, which is another partition, we can see here is actually a nine gig total. So it's basically, there's a few other things here, but basically of that 16 gigs, so nine gigs and something is given to the root partition and then 3.6 gigs is given to the user partition and then a few other bits and pieces like the boot partition and so on. So that's an interesting way of dividing it up. So that gives you a good idea of how uh, much space you're going to get with the 16 gig version. Let's also take a look at slash etc slash OS release. And that tells me it's Debian 13 Trixie that I'm running here. So at least they're running a very modern, uh, the latest version of Debian here at the launch of this board. That's good news. OK, let's just play with a few other things. Go up here to applications and we've already run the file manager. We've run the web browser. Let's just go to settings. You know, let's do something simple. Let's go to desktop and then maybe see whether we can change the wallpaper. Yep, you can. Let's try a different wallpaper. OK. Uh, and that's more of a standard Debian uh, wallpaper. And one final thing to mention is because this is a full Linux desktop, of course, you can do development here that's not actually related to the board itself. I could write a Python program, for example. Let's in fact, let's just do that. So I'm going to the terminal here. There are other ways to do this, but let's just write a quick Python program. OK, just a quick print statement, nothing fancy. And now we can run that using Python. There you go. You can do C, you can do Go, you can do Rust. It's all here on this board. OK, now there's obviously much more to cover. There's this whole app lab thing and, and the microcontrol and all that. But that's the end of the desktop tour. OK, so there you have it. So the Arduino Q as a single board computer running a Linux desktop. As I said, more to come about the microcontroller part. But for this video, that's it. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to find out more about the Arduino Uno Q, then please do subscribe to the channel. OK, I'll see you in the next one.